So after they've opted in, what we can do is just consistently send them valuable information that reinforces what they got. Right. And um, one thing we can do is we can send this off to anybody. But another really cool thing is this idea of purchase intent. Um, purchase intent is powerful because there's certain things that people do that will show that they're more interested. And so I'll give you an example from an e-commerce perspective. You know, most people in e-commerce will have, you know, a newsletter that goes off and they're talking about stuff. But you can put strategically placed images. Let's say you have images for your main three categories, right? You have your three categories. When somebody clicks on one of those categories, that's like them raising their hand and saying, you know what? I'm interested in that category and what's in there. That could then set off a trigger where now you send a sequence of emails reinforcing that category. And these are some of the main things that you want to do in these sequences. The first thing and the most important thing is social proof. Social proof is pivotal. If you think about Amazon, I believe one of the most valuable things that Amazon has is its review engine. Like think about the amount of reviews. And so I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have. I'll be in like Best Buy or Dick's Sporting Goods or something, and I'll see a product and I'll be like, hmm, I, I think I want that, but I'll go to Amazon just to see the reviews before I buy it. I don't care about spending five extra bucks, but I do care about social proof, about what other people think about that. And so when I see it's four and a half stars and you know 4,000 reviews, I have all the confidence in the world to purchase that. And so collecting and distributing social proof is at the heart of advocacy. That's what an advocate is. You can get testimonials, get reviews. And so constantly be in the process of requiring this types of social proof and then sharing it with new people that come through. The next step is overcoming objections. And this is in any business or any service that product thing that you offer, there's gonna be some reasons why people don't think like they're gonna take action. Don't hide from the fact, don't like ignore the fact, actually bring it up and solve it. And if you have to give a guarantee or um, you know any kind of uh, thing that you can do to help them overcome that objection, make that, that very clear and share that with them upfront and very specifically. Uh, the next piece is the promotional sequence. And this is sometimes you get to nudge people, right? You get to nudge people. And one of the best ways you can nudge people is by giving them a bit of a deal. And rather than just like dropping the price of your products, I would say, how can you add value, right? How could you bundle products together? How could you give an extra service? How could you give, you know, the printed version of a book with it? it by adding value and giving more, and increasing the value of what you have to offer, you can charge more, but also you position yourself as a value person. When you think promotional, don't always think like you have to just, you know, drop the price. That devalues what you have to offer. And then the last piece is asking for the sale. Now, this is something that's really interesting. Um, Again, especially in the e-commerce world, e-commerce brands tend not to like be too persuasive. They tend not to ask. They're more like a show, right? You go to the website and it's like, well, here's all my things, buy it if you want. But you know what? Like when you meet a salesperson, they use persuasion, they use influence, they share things, they help encourage people. Why would you not do that with your emails? Why would you not use you know copywriting that actually elicits response? That's so natural to do when we think in the sales world, but not so much in the online world. And so I would say it's, you know, go for it. Ask for the sale, reinforce why this is a good deal. Ask them to purchase. And so this whole flow at any of these stages, they could make a decision. And those decisions could be, I will not buy, and if they don't, then I would just say, keep sending them cool stuff until they do. Like just keep sending them cool stuff. And if they do buy, well then I would say, drop them into this next phase of the funnel, which we're gonna cover right now called the loyalty section or the advocacy section.